Hi everybody, I think I'm live. Uh, my name is Heidi. I am a certified professional dog trainer and I'm so happy to be here today to answer questions you may have for me. Uh, a little background um, about myself. I've been dog training for about 15 years. Um, I remember my earliest experience with dogs is um, growing up in Southern California, the backyard of where I lived was a big backyard and I would come home from school and um, there would be a dog in my backyard so I would play with him. Sometimes I'd come home and there would be my toy shredded in the backyard and I didn't care because I got to play with the dog. Uh, on the other side of me there was uh, a neighbor that I would go visit and he had two or three German Shepherds at once so I got to hang out with them. Uh, fast forward, one of my first jobs was working at a pet store. The owner of that pet store was like a second dad to me. I learned all about breeds in that pet store. I learned about uh, basic grooming, bathing. Um, uh, one of the biggest things, he had a book of breeds, so I got to study all the breeds. Um, just, it was a great job. Uh, fast forward from there, um, I did become a teacher for a while, and while, while, while I was teaching, I volunteered at a local shelter. I ended up spending 11 years volunteering there. Um, it was amazing, you know, being that long. They gave me a lot more responsibility as time went on, uh, and I got to train other volunteers. I also uh, uh, trained volunteers, and I learned a lot about, wow, just a lot about reality in the shelters, um, how everybody that works there just has the biggest hearts. Um, and uh, anyways, 11 years there. And in the meantime, I got one dog training certification, a smaller one, but I also had three kids under three. Um, and I would bring them to the shelter uh, to use as, um, you know, guinea pigs. And um, a funny story is uh, when my twins were potty training and they needed me at the shelter, I um, brought them naked in my minivan with their porta potties to make sure that they were continuing their potty training. And um, um, I was only about five or six feet away in the yard helping somebody intru introduce their dog to um, one of our dogs to hopefully adopt the dog. Um, what else do I want to say about it? There was so much to learn at the at the shelter. What a blessing. I'm still friends with a lot of people there. As I was doing dog volunteering there, two of the other uh, volunteers started going into dog training and they kept bugging me to do more dog training. Um, but of course, I had three young kids. So how was that going to work? Well, it worked. Um, it was what I wanted to do. So um, I started you know, teaching puppy classes. I started dog walking. I did everything I can and to learn more about dogs and, and get my professional certification of dog training. It took a while, but it was worth it. Uh, and um, a funny story with that is um, one of the dogs at the shelter was returned two or three times before it was four months old. And uh, the sergeant of the shelter said that it's going to be put down tonight or you have to take it home. So I took this unruly dog that had big letters on his cage that said, no kids. And I had three under three. So now I had three dogs and three kids um, under three years old. So that was, I learned a lot. Um, everybody survived, everybody was happy. Uh, in that time, I also fostered dogs, rehab dogs, uh, had puppies at my house, um, on and on. Fast forward from there, I ended up moving to Montana and I was blessed to work at the Humane Society there. Um, could almost make me tear up because I had the best boss and uh, just learned so much there. A big part about the Humane Society was they wanted to keep dogs in their home. So one of my jobs was to answer the phone to anybody that called that needed help with their dog and I would give them handouts and I would help them the best I could to help them keep their dog in the home. And that was really successful. And, um, if, and it, it, you know, hopefully somebody out there is hearing this and can use that at their shelter. Um, it's just, it's amazing how sometimes little things can really help keep dogs in the shelter. And um, so also um, the, the learning at the Humane Society, you know, 
the goal was to keep the dogs happy. If you can find out what the dog needs inside the shelter and give that to them, then it made them, um, uh, you know, a potential, a better, a better dog in the home. So, um, enrichment, enriching dogs lives in the shelter was beneficial in getting them out the door. So that was an amazing, amazing job. So, uh, so I continued, dog training there and I recently moved back to California about two years ago. Uh, fortunately, uh, word got out that I moved back and um, so my dog training career has continued since I've been back here, so, which is fantastic because I love what I do. Um, I have two dogs of my own right now. One is almost 18 border collie she's sleeping behind me and another one is um a little scrappy who's six pounds who came they both came from the shelter i volunteered out here um and scrappy i believe is a chinese crested powder puff yeah look it up i i what he's from a hoarding case of 150 dogs um so those are my two dogs now so um i would love to hear any of your questions that you might have um i'll do my best to answer them um so uh yeah that's a little bit about me um and i still have my three kids too they they stayed and they they've been a big help in my dog training also um hi everybody i see some people are popping in uh so a big question that i've had uh in these la in this last year obviously is um um socialization with puppies which is really really important crucial i'd like to say i get a lot of phone calls with the dogs that um i it's it's you know it's funny it's not funny i usually get phone calls when dogs are um just between four or five months and new behaviors are popping up uh and that's usually because they're the puppies are now out of that socialization period and um new things the dogs are seeing new things and it's and it's scaring them so um socialization with puppies is super important usually cuts off about four months so i get really happy when people call me and say i'm getting a puppy so i can set them up correctly or that they just got a puppy and they'd love to start training because training can start as early as neonatal, just holding the puppy, manipulating the puppy. Um, and obviously you don't want to adopt a puppy until they're between eight and 10 weeks old. Uh, but immediately training needs to happen, setting the dog up for success. Um, so someone just typed in two-year-old golden doodle, very popular breed right now. I have a lot of golden doodles. Crazy obsession with shadows, uh, consumes her life. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yes. Um, so without knowing a lot more, I can tell you shadows sometimes come when people use that laser to have dogs chase. So, um, if that happens to be the case, stop that. Uh, redirecting when a dog is obsessively doing something it's really good that you can redirect so kind of hey hey get their attention come over here let's play with this good dog good dog um, so redirecting is huge so um, when you re redirect a dog make sure you get their attention first make sure they you have something really exciting to take their focus off the shadow uh, and also probably the most important is trying to trying to prevent them to practice that behavior because the more she's chasing the shadows the more she's going to chase shadows so when you see her do it redirect it and give her a toy give her a treat you want to have you know taking the focus off the shadow good things happen so you know off the shadow yes and when you don't look at that shadow good things happen um exercise too make sure she's getting at least he she is getting at least at least two 20 minute walks a day. Everything out, outside of that is bonus. Um, basic training for mental stimulation is great. Uh, maybe toss some kibble in the yard for her to search out the kibble to take her distractions off the shadow. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Yeah, cell phone light shadows in the bedroom. Good, that's a very good information. You're probably correct on that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, play ball is really good, but that's kind of a bonus on top of the walks. Walks are really important. Dogs need to smell other dogs you're in. Uh, it's kind of like reading the paper. The outside world is very stimulating. You can't get, uh, you can't get what's in the outside world. 
you can't um, mimic it or copy it in your backyard. So even people that had these huge yards and think their dog is getting all this exercise, most of the time the dog goes outside, goes to the bathroom, sniffs around and comes back inside. Unless you're outside playing with them, mm, um, but dog walks, super, super important for every dog. Uh, just letting them get out and, and smell things and see things is very mental, mentally stimulating for dogs. Um, she's been doing this for two years, but two months. Yeah. Well, the good thing is when your dog's only been doing something for two months, that's not a very long time for it to be, a a, a, a a bad habit. So, so you have plenty of time to redirect that behavior into something other than chasing the shadows. Um, okay. Let's see. You're very welcome. Whoopsie. Um, so another phone call that, um, I get a lot is leash reactivity. Uh, you know, that is without getting too much into it. I can tell you that what usually happens with dogs. So every dog learns from association. So a lot of times people get nervous when they're walking their dog on a leash and they see another dog, especially if the dog's getting closer, they tend to tighten up on the leash, put some tension in the leash, and over time that teaches the dog that they should be nervous with whatever dog is coming near them. So um, there's a lot more to it, but what I can tell you is when you see another dog, if it's at a distance where your dog is calm, they call it under threshold calm, but they know the dog is the wear, you need to make sure you have a loose leash and you have some really high value treats to tell your dog when there's other dogs around, yummy things happen. So um, that's for leash reactivity, that's, that's one tip. Another thing is to lure the dog, um, lure the dog away from what is making that dog nervous. And when you are at that distance, then you can work off that dog. Um, I think there were questions early in the chat. Thank you for telling me. Let me see if I can go back there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I am scrolling. Give me a minute. Um, Pomeranians start barking a lot. <laughs> Yeah, barking, that can get annoying. So all dogs bark, right? So there's different kinds of barking. Um, demand barking. Let's talk about demand barking. Demand barking is uh, kind of uh, reinforced by the owner because here you got this cute little Pomeranian that might start with whining at you and you look at it, right? And you say, oh, look at that cute dog. And the dog learns, um, all you have to do is whine at you and I get your attention. And then maybe later he might bark once and then you look at him and say, stop it. And then he knows that he got your attention. So demand barking, best thing you could do is wait it out until he's quiet and then give him attention. So demand barking is only give your dog attention when they're quiet or doing nothing. Do not give your dog attention when it's barking. Um, also, let's uh, alert barking, alert barking. Hello, bark, bark, there's someone at the door. Uh, so we like alert barking, but we also want to teach them when someone's at the door. Thank you very much. Two barks are enough. Here's a treat. So if you know somebody's at the door and you hear a couple barking, uh, hear the dog barking, that's a good time to give the dog, I have my props, a Kong or something long lasting. Oh, thank you for letting me know something's here. Here's your Kong. Go take it somewhere else and go chew it on your bed. Um, or you can do a couple knocks on your wall and give your dog little pieces of treats. Couple knocks on your wall, little pieces of treats. Um, what's another barking? Demand barking, alert barking, boredom barking. So if you leave your dog in the backyard unsupervised and your dog becomes bored, he will just start barking to to feel good. And then that becomes a habit and they bark. So uh, don't leave your dog in the backyard. Um, dog barking at the window when people go by, a quick fix would be to block your window. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, blocking your window works really well. Redirecting them off the window. Um, if you leave your dog under supervised and he does something that you don't like, like barking, then it becomes a little bit of a challenge. Um, I hope that answers that question. Uh, what age do Goldens get calm? <laughs> uh, I, mm, I want to say between two and three, but of course the exercise really helps uh, with that. Um, let's see. 
Oopsie. Um, so another thing, let me, t oh, so I want to go back to socialization with puppies. So socialization happens the first four months. And because of COVID, a lot of people haven't been taking their dog out. So um, if you have a puppy right now that's under four months, the best thing you can do is have, I know, I, you know, under safety precautions, of course, but have as many people as you can meet your dog, especially men, especially kids. Uh, you can take your dog um, to a park and just stand there and let him see the crazy with the basketballs and the skateboards and just from a distance will even help your dog. Uh, I like to take puppies. Um, um, I just, I, I like uh, to take puppies, just to stand outside a target with a, a leash and feed treats as people go by or just let them observe people go by. Um, so as, 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 as many places that you can take, even if you take in the car and drive around so your dog can be exposed. Uh, but kids are really important. Noises are really important. important. Um, men with hats, men with sunglasses, uh, on and, you know, um, trying to think whatever else. Just know that under four months, it's very crucial. Uh, the rule used to be, probably still is, uh, 200 people to meet before the dog turns four months. Uh, let's see. Um, oopsie. So here's another question. People ask about uh, my puppy's biting. How do I get my puppy to stop biting? Um, so puppy biting is normal. Uh, all dogs learn with their mouth. That's how they discover the world. They want to put their mouth on everything. That's, that's how they take in information. So I always tell my clients prevention, any behavior problem that you might be having prevention is number one. So when you have a puppy, that puppy is going to be naughty. That's what puppies do. That's why they make them cute. So you have to prevent the naughty. That's, that's your job. So crate training is fantastic. Um, an exercise pin with the crate inside is is my favorite setup because you're setting everybody up for success. The puppy can't get naughty because there's nothing in there uh, that he can do that um, is naughty, chewing on table legs or taking socks in the other room. And um, so an, an exercise pen with a with a crate inside, um, you could always contact me after. I can send you a lovely picture of that. Uh, having all their chew items in there, having their bed in their crate, having um, just everything the, the dog needs. It's almost like a teenager room, right? They in there and, and that's, that's the environment that they have to be in control of is that little room. Uh, so uh, that is, will prevent them from biting. And when you take them out of the exercise pen, make sure you're armed with things that you can stick in their mouth. Once they start chewing on your hand, that's very... Uh, satiating for dogs. They, they like that, that feeling. So if, if your dog um, starts chewing on your hands, of course you can say, hey, that's not okay, ow, and then give them something that is appropriate and praise them. Uh, I have to, and all dogs like different things. When I was at the Humane Society, we would have a litter of dogs and we would put 10, 12 things in there. Some dogs like fluffy things. Some dogs like hard chew items. Some dogs like um, things they can shred. So once you find out what your puppy likes, it makes it that much easier to redirect them to that. But prevention and management, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. Um, let's see. Blah, blah. My dog will never come. Oh, I like this one. My dog will never come when I call. He only comes when I offer a treat. <laughs> it feels manipulative. Okay. So, um, you know, I tell my clients when it comes to recall, calling a dog, if there's any time to have a treat, that would be the time because it's, it's dangerous. Um, my little dog has learned um, if I say the word here, because I ruin the word come, I say, come, 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 come all the time. Pretty much my little dog was like, yeah, whatever. You say that word all the time. It really doesn't mean something. So I had to change the word to here. So I started off going here and giving him a treat here, giving him a treat. Then over time, if I use the word here, he's like, I don't know what that means. But when I come to you, 
boy, you got a treat. So I, that's my word now. So now wherever I am, if I'm going to use that word, it means that something good is going to be given to my dog. So I don't like to use the word here unless I have something. Granted, we don't always have treats, but if you are very consistent with using the word come, or in my case here, if you're very consistent having something that dog likes, then more than likely they're gonna come. That being said, teaching a dog to come inside the house is very different than teaching your dog to come in the front yard, which is very different from teaching your dog to come on a trail. Uh, I don't believe any trainer should guarantee a recall because there's always something in this world that's gonna be more exciting than the bacon, more exciting than the hot dogs. So you have to do your best that you can to be very consistent using that word with something that the dog really, really loves. It is not the time to bring out the dry biscuits. It is not the time. Um, if I had a Frisbee, one of my dogs loved the Frisbee. So if I could get her attention and she saw that I had the Frisbee, she was turning on a dime. Um, also, um, I forgot about this. You never want to call a dog that you don't have their attention. So if you have a hound dog with his head in the hole, probably most likely, no matter how good your recall is, he's not going to be coming to you. You have to wait till he's done doing what he's doing and then get his attention. And then when he turns towards you, then he sees that you have something amazing for him. So don't call a dog unless you have their attention. Make sure you work on it ample amount of time in the house until you perfected it almost. Then work, at it, work on it in the backyard. Then work on it at a park. Then maybe on the trail. Um, but consistency and really high value reward. Let's see. Hope that answered that. What are your thoughts on the piece of grass on balcony and apartment for potty training? Google is 14 weeks and just faxed it. Um, I think that's fantastic. One of my clients did that. I wish I had that. That's, um, so dogs are very good to, dogs will, whatever they learn on is where they go. So if you teach a dog to go on cement, he's going to go on cement. If you teach a dog to go on grass, he's going to go on grass. So when you're potty training a dog, it's best to be consistent. So if you're teaching him to go on a pack, a pack, a, a patch of grass on your balcony, and you're also teaching him to go on grass in the front yard, fantastic. Just know that if you transfer from the patch of grass um, and you have to go downstairs and out the front yard, he might not make it, but grass is grass. And I think that's fantastic. You're setting that dog up for success. Anybody? Uh, uh, so need to potty train without taking him out. He is pad potty trained inside, but getting nervous about his age and being potty trained. Um, so you can, um, if it, if you, if so pee pad potty training, people do it. Uh, the dog gets used to, to peeing on a pee pad. Um, you know, that's, that, that's okay to do if that's what you want. Um, training from a pee pad to go outside. Absolutely. You absolutely, you can still do it. Um, now you have to just that's where he has to go now and that's where it has to be reinforced with three small yummy treats so you have to i would you know have him in a crate or a small confinement area and as soon as um, you take him out he goes directly to the grass and you become really boring and tell him to go potty and when he goes potty you reward the dog with you know good dog and then three amazing treats. So yes, you can go from the pee pad to outside. Uh, getting nervous about is it? Yeah. So yes, you can always. Do, I would. I would be really consistent about that, though. Really consistent. Um, pee pee pad dogs sometimes. If you take the pad away, they might pee on your. Um, on a little bath mat or something because it's the same to them. So just consistency and high value rewards, uh, and you should be good to go. You're welcome. 
Um, feel free to do more questions. I'm sorry if I missed any. Um, so here's a, so separation anxiety. Let's talk about that uh, because also since COVID, uh, because dogs haven't been able to um, go out or the people haven't been able to go out, a lot of people have been home this whole time with their puppy, and then all of a sudden now they're going back to work and their dog is a little anxious about it. So as far as if anybody has a dog right now or a puppy and they haven't left their dog home alone, do that. Do that. Just say goodbye to your dog. Don't make it a big deal. Leave for 10, 15 minutes. When you come back, don't make it a big deal. Um, make sure when you do leave, um, I'm repeating myself, but I want to go over it. When you do leave, don't say to your dog, oh my gosh, I know you haven't been home alone. Um, we'll be back shortly. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, that, that, that's going to cause the dog to be a little anxious. So instead, you know, five, 10 minutes before you leave, give your dog a Kong or something long lasting, give them it. Then, you know, five or 10 minutes later, grab your stuff and go. Uh, the dog's going to be busy. Doesn't really care that you leave. And then when you come back, I always tell my clients, do three or four things. Maybe go to the bathroom, put your purse down, uh, whatever other, you know, take your shoes off, then go say hi to your dog because you don't want you coming back home. Oh my gosh, I missed you. We're back, you know, because you just, that can cause a little anxiety the next time you go. So make your departure cues and your arrival, cue, arrival cues um, kind of not a big deal. So your dog won't really think it's a big deal that you leave, but it's really important if you have a puppy now to kind of pretend like you're living a normal life and uh, instead of everybody at home and then all of a sudden everybody goes back to work because anything that's different in a puppy's life all of a sudden or a dog's life in general, if you don't do it now and all of a sudden you do it later, the dog's going to go, um, that didn't happen before. What the heck's going on? I hope that made sense. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hi, Heidi. Um, hi. Let me see. Clementine, the corner. I need her to sit and stay. She does, but she's over threshold and won't look at me to take a treat. Yeah. Um, you are correct. Um, that's Thank you for saying that, uh, Caroline. So good information right there. If a dog does not take a treat, it's two things. Most likely your dog is over threshold. If a dog takes treats inside your house or maybe in your front, do front yard, but then you go somewhere and or you're on a walk and the dog doesn't take treats, um, either your treats are not high value enough. And when I say high value, I'm talking the yummies. I'm talking hot dogs, um, cheese, uh, boiled chicken. Um, uh, of course, in very small, uh, you know, like the size of your pinky nail treats. That's, um, that's all, that's all you need. Uh, but as Caroline was saying, her dog, the one she's, uh, walking, it's over threshold. It's just nervous all the time. So it's not taking treats. So the best thing I can tell you is distance yourself from whatever the dog is nervous about. So if it's nervous about a corner, then you need to back up from that corner and slowly desensitize the dogs to that one corner. Um, and let's talk about association when it comes to that. So all dogs learn from association. So let's say you are walking Clementine and you approach the corner and all of a sudden, a trash truck makes a big noise and the next day you approach that corner and Clementine is like, um, excuse me, this is where the world ended yesterday. I don't want to go to that corner. So a lot of times you don't know why a dog is nervous in certain situation, but the fix to that problem is always the same. So if you see that your dog is nervous, you want to make him feel different about it next time you go to that situation. And usually, or not usually, most of the time, is to distance. You start early on when your dog is like, um, the corner's way up there, but I know that corner's there. Um, I'm okay back here. So um, let's, you know, that's where you need to work on the behavior is far enough from there where they can be okay with taking in information and, and, take the treats. And then over time, the idea is they can get closer and closer to the scary thing and realize it's not that bad. In fact, the corners bring hot dogs, so I can handle this corner. 
feel like I'm talking a whole lot. I hope that helped you, uh, Caroline. Uh, she's doing great with seeing dog, but she's still on the edge being outside. Yeah, I know. And you, um, you did a, re you're doing a really good job. Uh, uh, in, so, so she also asked the questions that she is nervous just being outside. So, um, back up, uh, we'll do some things inside the house first to kind of keep her under threshold in the house. Uh, maybe do a little obedience training in the house. Don't let her leave the house until she's in a, in a calm state. Um, if she starts getting nervous in the front yard, then maybe work just on the doorstep for a while until she's calm in the driveway. And once she's calm in the driveway, you know, play with her in the driveway, little obedience in the driveway. When she's calm, then you can advance a little forward. Uh, it sounds like that might take forever, but you know what? Even if you only get your dog two to three houses down and that dog learned to be less scared, and, and and used her brain in the process, not only is she gonna be tired out mentally, you helped her to, to be a little less scared walking out that door that day. So don't get in your head that you have to go on these long walks to tire out these dogs. It's not beneficial to dogs if they're nervous when they go on walks, if they're leash reactive when they go on walks. Start training in your front yard or even at your doorstep. Your dogs will appreciate it and 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 just learning in general will tire them out. Um, I have clients that the dog is too scared to go out the front door because of COVID. So um, that uh, we found out this dog recently loved tennis balls, didn't take treats, um, didn't chicken, didn't take chicken, hamburger, cheese, but all of a sudden this dog would see a tennis ball and just be like, okay, what do you want from me? So we started playing tennis or not playing, <laughs> started bouncing the ball, right? You know, at the doorstep and the dog's like, okay, what do you want me to do? Where can I? And then we'd slowly bounce the, the ball a little more and let him go a couple feet out and grab the ball and run back inside the house. And then a little bit more. And now the dog is in the front yard going, I love this front yard. There's a tennis ball. Still won't take treats, but the tennis ball worked. So hope that helps. Uh, hi, Tammy. Uh, Jax is around 14 weeks and, whoops, and never been outside, really due to not being vaccinated earlier since she was sick. Still can take him out for another two weeks since he just had a vaccination. Should I? Um, yes. Um, so I would definitely be taking him in the car, uh, at least, you know, in the car to see different sites. Um, Take, uh, I would have people come to your house, wherever you feel safe coming into your house. Um, a lot of socialization can just happen within the walls of your house by having different people come over. Uh, tall men, short men, men with sunglasses, men with hats. Uh, take them in the car, the places. Uh, it, um, um, you could also carry your dog places if you're nervous about putting them down. Um, take it, yeah, whatever you can think about um, where you feel safe enough to take your dogs. Obviously not dog parks um, or places where a lot of dogs have frequented. Uh, but yes, um, so 14 weeks. So you're right at the cusp. I would, uh, two weeks, two weeks since. If he's in, vaccinated, yes, you need to take him as many places as you can right now. Um, I like to get a long line when I take dogs puppies to um, expose them to the outside world. That way they have a lot more space to move around. So there's not tension. So if they're nervous of something, they can distance them themselves instead of feeling the tension on the leash. Um, I, I, so I highly recommend if your dog hasn't been out a lot to get a long line. Don't worry about um, loose leash walking right now. It's all about exposure to the outside world on a long line. So you can be careful it doesn't get twisted and goes underneath things. But a long line where your dog, the, 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 to have slack in the line so your dog, if it's nervous, can back away on its own. Um, I hope I hope that helps. So a long line and take them anywhere you can and, and, and carry high value treats. And if your dog's nervous about anything, then um, expose them to it again another time, but at a distance. 
uh, and your dog's still young, so just be really consistent about showing him to the outside world, but respect that if he's nervous about him, not to bring him closer to it, um, just that you need to distance yourself and, and um, you know, of course, talk to your dog. Have a good time with your dog. Dogs aren't going to learn unless they uh, are having a good time. So any kind of training, make sure you're both having a good time. Training is five minutes at a time, two or three times a day. Uh, I, I call it formal training, like sitting, lying down, go to your bed. Uh, training is happening 24 hours a day. Well, not when you're sleeping, but 24 hours a day, you know, your dog is taking in information. So make it, make his life fun. If, if, if the dog's not having a good time, um, he's not going to remember that information. So have it be fun for everybody. Uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ah, uh, thanks, Caroline. Mm. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, so another question that I get asked is, uh, so this has happened a lot during COVID too. People, people obviously are, a lot of people are getting dogs. A lot of people are getting dogs um, when they already have a dog at home. It, they think it's a good time to get a puppy because they're home. Um, my best recommendation on that, if you get a new puppy, or um, let's talk about if you are deciding to get a dog right now. If you, <clears throat> the best match after working at uh, Animal Shelter and the Humane Society <clears throat> is, usually, <clears throat> is usually opposite gender. So if you have a girl at home, get a boy. If you had a, a boy dog at home, get a girl. Um, your worst match, uh, it, it, it does it work sometimes, of course, but your worst match is two females. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to go into that, but, you know, I always tell my clients, it's kind of like that in all species. <laughs> but uh, so two girls, um, you know, there's going to be, they're probably most likely into being roommates as opposed to best buddies. But, uh, uh, of course, people have two girls out there and it works, but your best match would be the opposite gender. So if you have an older dog at home, um, older, maybe over five or six, and he's been the only dog that whole time, and then you bring a puppy home, just know that that older dog takes priority. Um, he sh that, that one, it, th your job is to make that one happy first. So when you bring a new puppy home, um, again, I love the X-Pen because then your other dog can not be bugged by this little dog that has sharp nails and teeth when your older dog's just trying to take a nap. So, so prevention is best and keeping it in the X pen and then your other dog can come up to the little dog as much as he wants and get to know the dog without having that uh, initial a negative association of jumping and clawing and bothering. So that's number one. If you get a new dog in the house or new puppy in the house, just prevention is prevention and management is first. Um, anything that you do with that puppy that's fun and exciting, the other dog should be a part of that. So when the puppy comes home, now you go on a walk. The puppy comes home, now the older dog gets to play ball. The puppy comes home is, um, and this dog gets treats. So it should be a great association when you bring the puppy home. Look, we got a new puppy. Now you get to play ball more. Look, we got a new puppy. Oh, all these wonderful things happen. And so the older dog essentially goes, I like this puppy. Before this puppy came, I didn't get that many walks. And hope that makes sense. Instead of bring a new puppy home and all of a sudden the other dog gets annoyed or gets ignored, then the association's not good. So um, we want to make the puppy coming home means good things happen to the older dog or the already owned dog. Okay, let's see. Come on, peep. Let me see. Yes, you're very welcome. Hi, everybody. I love all the waves. Um, so, okay, here's another one. Um, people ask, you know, my dog's scared of bikes. My dog's scared of, um, skateboards. Um, whatever your dog is scared of, uh, it's, it's pretty much the, to, to help that situation, um, is kind of what I talked about earlier. If your dog, um, barks or lunges at anything, 
It's pretty much that your dog is uncomfortable. It's not that your dog's a bad dog. I don't believe there's any bad dogs out there. Uh, any kind of reactivity, lunging, um, barking, anything of aggressive behavior is because the dog is nervous and scared. So you, you, you respect the dog's behavior and know that if a bike is coming or a skateboard is coming, that your dog needs to be taken out of the situation so you don't uh, so the dog doesn't have to react like that again because dogs don't like to bark and lunge. Dogs don't like to to display aggression. I hate that word, um, but they don't like to be angry and scared and anxious. So uh, do your best to when you see um, whatever the scary thing up ahead, you know, that's when the treats come out and distance yourself. Uh, um, another thing I wanted to talk about uh, is, um, <laughs> hopefully that comes back to my brain. Um, let's see, uh, mm, new dog. Oh, jumping. That's a huge one that I get. How do I keep my dog from jumping? I'm going to go back to prevention again, right? Prevention. If you know your dog is going to jump on a stranger, then it's up to you to either have that dog on leash um, be shoving treats in his mouth really low because obviously if you have the treats up high, then we're going to be reinforcing the jump. So here comes the stranger. You're down low. Treat, treat, treat. Good dog for being on all fours. Good, 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 good. Um, it's much easier to do when the dog is on leash, but you want to set you, yourself up and your dog for success. So if you know your dog is going to behave in a certain way, you need to do your best to be prepared for that situation. So uh, situations where dogs will jump, somebody comes in the front door. Well, you already know someone's coming in the front door if the doors, if someone's gonna knock on the door. Um, so you have to get the leash out and, you know, prevent the dog from jumping and maybe toss a bunch of treats on the ground or, or um, have the leash in your hand. Of course, we want to make it a happy experience, but we just don't want the jump to happen. Uh, one thing I really uh, was excited about learning at the Humane Society is in my, I miss this so much. Um, I had an office and I got to take the the uh, the unruly, the dogs that needed help. They were all great dogs. I, I love a challenge. Um, um, I used to say, and I love golden retrievers people, but, um, you know, I never want a golden retriever because, um, they're, they're not challenging enough. <laughs> I love them. But so I would, uh, I was able to, whatever dog needed help in the humane society, I was able to take downstairs and I would, you know, be working on the computer and whatnot. And these dogs, whatever I bring down, they're, you know, they're naughty. That's why I brought them down. They would be two paws on the desk, you know, take my papers on the desk. Um, I don't know, take my shoes and just, you got to laugh. So I would tether, I would tether their leash to, um, of course, something that's heavy. Cause, um, you know, way back in the day, I learned that that was a smart thing to do. <laughs> T tether it to the file cabinet or something that's not going to move. Granted, when you tether a dog, there's enough slack where they can't hurt themselves and the dog's two feet from me. So you put a bed down and you tether them and the goal is, or the, 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 why I do this is because if the dog tries to jump on the desk, he can't. And it's almost like he throws a little tantrum and then he gives up and then he lays down on his bed and what's on his bed, but you know, bones and treats and, and a, and a Kong. And I, I kid you not, it takes about two or three times of that. And then when they come into the office, they don't even bother jumping anymore because they don't get anything out of it and all the good stuff is down low. So I'm a big fan of tethering as long as you're right next to the dog and a, it, the dog is safe. Do not tether a dog and, and leave. Uh, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to think of, uh, some, um, some, Oh, uh, new babies in the house. Of course, that's going to be, um, positive association too. The baby comes home, treats happen to the dog. The baby comes home. Um, um, the dog gets to go on a walk with the stroller. Uh, it's all about association. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not much into corrections. Um, I, I, of course, interrupt negative behaviors. I don't like to correct really behaviors. I like to redirect them. Um, never say never, but that's, that's, I, 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 
I can pretty much redirect negative behaviors into something that I like. So if you have a new baby at home and a dog, um, if anything makes you nervous, then we redirect the behavior and then reward it. Uh, I recently had a client with um, a cute little Frenchie and uh, that dog was in the house for four years. And amazing dog, love that dog, the goofiest dog. Uh, and then they had a baby and the dog was a little uncomfortable with that. So, um, um, I, you know, before I became a trainer, I wasn't much into crate training. Now, what a great tool. So this Frenchie now is crate trained and the happiest dog because this Frenchie now doesn't feel like it has to be in charge of its environment. This dog would like bark at this and bark at this and, and uncomfortable with this. And the dog didn't know what to do with himself because there was just too much he had to control, you know, telling the owner like, no, over this, you got to pay attention to this. Now this dog is in the crate. He's got this long lasting bully stick or, and he, he, he can't get in there fast enough. So, um, so don't be against crate training. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great tool. Um, I can go into crate training, but you can always, um, contact me later. Um, oh, I don't, and I don't think I mentioned at the beginning, uh, uh, my website is HeidiPaws.com, P-A-W-S. Um, if you have any questions after this is over, you, my cell phone's on there. Feel free to text me. Feel free to email me. My email is Heidi at HeidiPaws. Uh, my passion is to help people. I can talk dog all the time. Um, I've heard so many, all dogs are good dogs. So don't be scared to tell me, um, the behaviors that your dog is, is, has, you know, the, the bad stuff your dog has done. Um, I've heard it all, seen it all, uh, not all. Shouldn't say that. I'm always learning. Always learning. Um, and and maybe I can learn from you. I've learned a lot from my clients. Learned a lot from my own dogs. Uh, so let's see if there's any other questions on here. Do do do. Hi 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 hi. Hashi bear. Hi. I love all these names. They're like dog names. Um. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, keep training fun. Remember that training takes time. Consistency is really important. Uh, having a certain word to mark behaviors is important. Everybody in your family should be using the same word. Um, uh, I love clicker training. I don't use it a lot with puppies. I use my mouth with puppies. Uh, if you have to mark a behavior, you know, use a word. Um, there's more about that on my website, but basically, um, I always tell, uh, new clients, um, uh, with puppies to ignore naughty behaviors, of course, if they're in their X-Pen or, but, and reward the good behaviors. Give your dog attention when they're doing nothing. Give your dog attention when they're lying on the bed. Give your dog attention when they're just standing there, um, a lot of people tend to give their dog attention when they're doing something wrong, which is actually reinforcing the behavior. Uh, it, kind of the same with kids, right? If your kid's quiet, uh, you don't really pay attention to that. Well, probably I hate this. I have to remind myself, you know, uh, to to give my kids attention when they're doing nothing. You know, um, you know, good job doing your homework. Or instead of hey, don't hit your brother. Hey you know, clean up your mess. Hey, so, uh, give your dog attention when they're doing nothing. Give your dog attention when they are quiet. Give your dog attention when they are just standing there. Um, reinforce behaviors that you like, uh, and redirect the behaviors you don't like into something that is appropriate. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what else. Um, leash pulling. We could talk about leash pulling. I have gotten a lot of uh, questions um, regarding uh, leash pulling. So um, leash pulling, like a lot of other things, should uh, start inside the house. Uh, so um, pretty much all training needs to start in a calm environment where there's no distractions. And uh, um, 
So with leash pulling, same kind of thing. You start inside the house for loose leash walking. And um, it's, it's, I'll explain a little bit. It's easier said than done. But you start with the dog uh, sitting at your side or sitting in front of you. And you take a, a step back. And when your dog comes towards you, you know, you don't want to pull the dog. You want the dog to come willingly. And when they take one step for you, you mark it. Good boy or girl. Good dog. And you reward it. And you keep doing that over and over. Maybe every step, good dog, good dog, good dog, a loose leash. As soon as um, you kind of are backed up and that dog is staying in front of you and getting rewarded, you can turn. And so now the dog is on your side and you're rewarding the dog for staying on your side. Uh, when you first start loose leash walking, it requires a high rate of reinforcement, which means every step equals one treat. Then you'll notice after a while, you're able to go two or three steps and the dog stays at your side. So you're pretty much good dog treat, good dog treat, and then a little bit further, good dog treat. Then once you perfected it in the house, then you can take it to the backyard and it kind of starts all over again. Once you have perfected it in the backyard, then you take it to the front yard and um, and work on loose leash walking there. Um, so any other questions? Let's see. How do we stop our pup from barking at other dogs? Um, my Pomeranian, my Pomeranian is one years old and he gets very excited and nervous when he, when he sees other dogs. Okay. So both kind of, um, both kind of similar. So, um, so excited when they see other dogs. So ex it, of course, dogs are going to be excited, right? Because they're, they, they, they're social animals. Um, so, uh, both are kind of treated the same way. If your dog gets excited when he sees another dog, then um, we, if he's if he's not over threshold and you could still get his attention, you know, you can either wait until he offers a sit or put him in a sit. Um, and when I say put him in a sit, I mean lure him with a treat or use your words. And when he's in a sit, you know, reward that behavior. And then if you want, you can give him the okay to greet the other dog. I don't recommend meeting a lot of dogs on leash. I like dogs to meet off leash in a secure area or someone's backyard or, you know, a dog park. Um, not a fan of dog parks, but if you know the people there and there's not a lot of people and, you know, of course, um, but uh, if a dog gets to meet another, a lot of other dogs on leash and then they can't meet dogs on leash, then the frustration happens. So, Right now, if you took your dog out and he was getting excited about another dog off leash, I would put some treats on his nose and direct him further away and then work at a distance where he's more calm. So the idea is to decrease distance over time. Seeing other dogs brings hot dogs. So and 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 get and so over time, we want to reward calm behaviors about um when close to other dogs, as opposed to excitement crazy gets to meet other dogs. I hope that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Any other questions? Da, 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 da. She's doing great. Okay, yeah. Whoops. Mm hmm. -hmm. I expect a bra. Hi, Tammy. Uh, let's see what. Okay, so a lot back in the day, people used to always say, I kind of hear it now too, but uh, people have understood um, how important socialization is more now uh, than I think years ago. Uh, but a lot of people will say, my dog was abused. Um, He's scared of men. He's 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 scared of men. So I think men abused him. Usually, almost guarantee it's just because the puppy didn't meet a lot of men in the socialization period. So um, I, I can't I can't I can't say this enough that it's really important for puppies to meet a lot of different men and a lot of different kids because that's that's it's really important that, that, um, that's, you know, usually it's the women raising the dogs. Um, it's just how it is. Uh, so if you have a puppy, make sure they meet a lot of kids, and a lot of men. Um, 
um, men with hats, men with sunglasses. I know I'm repeating myself, but I, if there's anybody new, I want them to hear that. Um, dogs need to dogs, dogs in their socialization period. They're a blank slate. Whatever they experience under four months kind of sets a tone for not that you can't always train a dog, but the socialization four months and under is really, um, sets a foundation for how it's going to go from there on out, if that makes sense. So if a dog hasn't been on stairs under four months, it's going to, you're going to have to work a little harder to get them to go up and down stairs. If a dog hasn't, um, uh, learned how to, uh, that's not a good example of swimming. Um, but whatever the dog hasn't been exposed to, um, umbrellas, um, um, bags flying across your yard, a anything that the dog hasn't seen under four months, when they see it after four months, they're going to be like, what is that? So just know that if your dog is, is starting to experience behaviors that are different after four months, it's probably just because the dog hasn't been exposed to it before four months. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to think whatever else I can go over to help you guys. Uh, if anybody can think of anybody else, um, I want to say again that my website is HeidiPaws.com. Um, I'm in Southern California, um, more park area, but I uh, have clients all over the place. Uh, if you're not near here, you feel free to call me and I'd love to help you and send you handouts. Um, uh, like I said before, I love talking dog wherever I can help. I, I want to try to help. Um, I have trainer friends, many places that I can refer to also, if you're not in my area. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, call me if you have questions or email me. My email is Heidi at HeidiPaws.com. Um, it's all on my website. I do have some videos on my website that can possibly help you. Uh, um, one thing I haven't talked about basic training is, is let me talk about basic training. So reinforcing behaviors. If you like a behavior that your dog does, um, that's where your dog should get the attention. Uh, I have my, my one dog is, he, he's a silly dog. He's a silly dog. So he does silly things. So one thing he would do is sneeze all the time. So I made a point to not really give him attention until he sneezed. So now that, uh, now, um, if I'm eating something and he sneezes, he gets a piece of that. And then after a while I knew he was going to do it. So I would put it on cue. So now my dog sneezes on cue. So, um, um, so basic training, um, basic training is, uh, marking behaviors. And I have a little video on my website regarding this. So, um, so if I, if I, if I mess this up now, look on my video, uh, so marking behaviors, any words you want to use, you can use bananas, you can use whatever, but I find that whatever is natural to come out of your mouth, you're going to use. So, over the years, I used to use the word yes, walk around going yes, yes, yes. Um, it's not normal to say yes all the time. Uh, so now you can use the word good. So if your dog sits, good dog, followed up with a reward. If your dog lays down, good dog, followed up with a reward. Use that word every time a dog does the behavior you like and follow it with something your dog likes. So um, when you have your dog for a period of time, you're going to know what your dog likes. Uh, a story a long time ago. Oh, 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 remembered something else. A story a long time ago was, um, um, a bulldog, an American bulldog, you know, the big husky bulldogs everybody likes. They couldn't get this dog to do anything. They, the owner finally said, this dog loves drinking out of a dripping faucet. Anyways, so they taught this dog agility and every time the dog did a certain um, a jump through the hoop or, or walking over something, the dog got to run and drink out of the faucet. So that's how they taught the dog to do agility because they knew what the dog liked. So if you know what your dog likes, you can use that as a reward. So let's talk about life rewards. Life rewards. What does your dog like? 
your dog might like you, so you can use yourself as a reward. Maybe you're on the other side of, um, maybe for recall, right? Maybe you can use, you, you have the dog on one end or somebody else has a dog on the other end and, and you're, you're in front of that person. That dog wants to come to you. So use yourself as a reward. Um, going out the front door, that's a reward, right? So you don't need to really have treats at the front door. You tell your dog to wait at the front door and when you release the dog out the front door, that's his reward. So, you know, you don't always have to use treats. Treats work. But like I said earlier, my dog loved the Frisbee. So when my dog sat, he got the Frisbee. When my dog sat and stayed, he got the Frisbee. When my dog was distracted by the other dog, the Frisbee came out. And all of a sudden, that dog didn't mean anything. So, um, and like I said before, the, the tennis ball. So you can use life rewards. Um, the dog likes to smell my, my third knucklehead dog that I was talking about. He loved to smell, it drove me nuts. So I started putting that on cue. If he walked loose on the leash, then I would tell him he could go smell. So that was a reward for, um, for walking loose on the leash, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, um, that, that I think is super, super important, uh, prevention of unwanted behaviors. There was, um, I have a couple clients or, or I have more than a couple clients over the years and I've talked to people on the phone that have this issue. So if you just tuned in, pay, t pay attention to what I'm going to say. Cause it's, 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 it's really important. Um, don't take things out of your dog's mouth. Don't hands coming towards your dog should always mean good things. Uh, a dog will learn really quickly that if you're doing something he doesn't like, that he's gonna change his behavior. So an example is, if your puppy's chewing on something and you're not sure what it is, maybe toss a whole bunch of hot dogs on the ground so that dog can drop what's in his mouth. But um, I tell my clients, um, maybe I'll get backlash from this, but I tell my clients, do not take anything out of your dog's mouth unless it's going to hurt them, unless it's going to cause danger. If your dog is chewing on sticks, let them. If your dog is bark, it seems to be a big deal lately. Let them. Most dogs just want to chew. They don't swallow um, unless they're retrievers, right? <laughs> Until you've taught the dog drop, I mean, and, and, and dropping means you 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 drop what you like to get something you like better but when you teach it the dog actually gets what they what they had in their mouth back to them but if you teach a dog that when he's chewing on something and obviously he's enjoying it that you're going to take it out of their mouth the behavior that happens is they start swallowing things quicker because they know you're going to take it out or they start guarding it because they know you're going to take it out. So I can't recommend enough that do not take things out of your dog's mouth. There's no need for it um, unless it's going to cause harm to that dog. If your dog is a rock chewer, then maybe he doesn't have enough bones or things to chew on. Rocks, rocks can be dangerous to dogs. I mean, if they chew on them all the time. My knucklehead dog used to fish for rocks out of the out of the stream and by 10 years old his teeth were a little more grounded down but you know what that's what he enjoyed and he he, he didn't chew them he just picked them up and carried them and um and he was a shredder so every now and then I would get him stuffed animals so he can shred them because that's what made him happy so um don't take things out of dog's mouth don't do it okay anybody let me scroll and see if I missed anybody. I love these names. Aussie boy. Hi. Love Aussies. Popular breed. Okay, let's see if there's something else I can talk about. So if if you have not trained a certain, if you have not trained a behavior, then manage it. Um, if, oh, I think my hour is up. I just looked. Anyways, one more thing. Um, so I am Heidi. My website is... Heidi Paws, P A W S dot com. My email is Heidi at Heidi Paws. Um, I hope I help some few. Uh, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on my site. I'd love to get back to you. Uh, have a great day, everybody. This was a lot of fun. Bye.